gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of It's Me Speaking to You. I am, as always, your ever-faithful host, Mr. Jeffrey Wilson, coming to you live and always direct from the gateway to the West, St. Louis, Missouri. Man, and we are rolling with some talent today, ladies and gentlemen, coming straight from the Quad Cities. This cat, man, a quite prolific Moving on to some films, as I've been seeing lately. But, boy, he set his uh, – he, he established himself as an amazing wide receiver in the NFL. This cat has done it all from w w working with the Oakland Raiders, the Redskins, the Jets, the Bears, starting out back in the day with the UNI Panthers, and even before that with the West Falcons representing oh, that old God. Mississippi Athletic Conference. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Kenny Shedd joining us on the program. What's up, my friend? <laughs> hey, hey, man! I, 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 I need to write you out a check for all those wonderful words that you just said. You did it, brother. What are you talking about? You did it. I'm just reading it. <laughs> hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, it, it would have been nice uh, to uh, if you just mentioned the Oakland Raiders because my that's really my only team. Uh, I, I did a quick stint with the other other teams, but there really is only one uh, pro team that I that I'm gonna uh, remain loyal to. Uh, mainly because that uh, Mr. Al Davis is the, only, is the first guy who gave me my first shot to play in the NFL, which it was a, that was amazing. Yeah. Well, absolutely, so, and you definitely made your mark with, with the Raiders. And you know, I wasn't I wasn't trying to cut you short, brother. I was just I no, was just, no, 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 I was no, just no, running no. down the resume, man. You you've been in, you know you you've done your thing for a hot minute here. Yeah. Hey, you know what? If if um uh you know I mean and to go back to that. You know, I ended up playing in like the the top four uh, biggest cities in in um in the, in the United States. You know, if, if Oakland was uh, down in LA, thank goodness I missed that. But I was in New York, I was in Chicago, I was in uh, yeah. uh you know with the with the Raiders, and then down in Washington D.C. Uh, so uh, when you think about it, a little kid from a uh, 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 you know, Midwest Iowa town out there. In those big hey, cities, brother, man. you you the, the the high school you graduated from is now the alumni high school of the W the former WWE champion Seth Rollins, as I'm sure you might know. Maybe you oh, yes, don't. Yes, 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 yes sir. Yes, yes, there you go. Uh, the breeding so many, champions um, out there in Falcon Land. Yeah. Um. Which uh, high school did he go to? He went to West, brother. Oh my goodness, that is just. Sick to me because <laughs> he he's making a he's making a name for himself uh, like you would not believe. And he represent uh, man. He know. represents the quad. I mean, he lets everybody know where he you know where he grew up and went to high school and all that. It's cool, man. It's actually cool. I know some of his other. Uh, I don't know him, but I don't know some of his other uh, family members and stuff. But uh, yeah, before we get too deep into your um, obviously lore on the uh, the gridiron NFL wise into you know what you're yeah. doing now post gridiron how did it start brother man i like i said we um we are from the same hometown the quad cities davenport iowa we went to different high schools but this was um there man i yeah I, you I went to north i i went to north yeah man but you you you're familiar <laughs> you know my brother and sister you know lance wilson shout out to lance you know candy wilson shout out to candy yeah but it's like you there, there was crazy. so much talent man there was so much crazy crazy talent back in the day man like like yeah. like, like any track race man it was always the four by one and it was always yeah so before we get into your you know your 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 nfl lore my friend uh you you were yeah. doing you were doing quite a bit of work back in the day um in the old quad city area at the old brady street stadium so you started running track uh, i'm assuming so w tell me where your athletic career started my friend if you don't mind well you know i mean um uh, what what really kind of set the stage for for me was like my my bro my brothers and my sisters uh you know uh they 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 kind of set the stage and um they put a little pressure because once i went to junior high school um you know people would say wait wait bill shed your brother uh man i know you got to play football uh -huh. um you know, and I think what kind of kind of uh, set me back a little bit was my size at that time. Hmm. You know, my brother's always been a very, very uh, well-built, muscly type dude, nice height, all that stuff. But me, I was a, I was a really scrawny dude. Um, so uh, I, you know, I didn't know if I could take on those type of hits and stuff in, in um, uh, on the football when we started uh, doing, uh, you know, tackle football. Were you always uh, you know, playing that same position? Were you always kind of going for that wide receiver kind of position? Or were you just kind of back in the day, just playing a little bit, whatever, where they put you in? Yeah, it was. It was just what. It, at first, I started off as a running back. 
uh, to follow my follow my brother's footsteps. But and I'm glad you brought that up because uh, had I known pretty much at that time, I should have kind of uh, gone maybe the wide receiver route instead of a running back because that's where my um, that's where I think my talent was 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 really at was the wide receiver side. Uh, I would have had a chance to kind of uh, kind of uh, you know iron out a little bit of things on the route running, which is which I found out in the pros is pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> So you were a part yeah, of that, man. So, back back in the day, man. I remember, and I, I I don't I didn't play, man. But I remember this brother, and you might remember him a little better. Better, and I don't want to take up too much time. I remember, he was a he was a he was a coach, small, really heavy dude, had big, huge calves. He was a big coach for all you guys back in the day on like the you know the black and the gold and the uh, man. Yeah. You may not remember him, dude. I, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, that was a thing. I um, back in the days. My, I was so small that uh, I, w- I had to sit and watch the black and the gold t- from the sidelines. My mom and dad wouldn't let me play because I was too small. <laughs> wow. So I had to beg. They put me, they, they put me on the, the flag football field. <laughs> so, wow. So when you're talking about these, these huge coaches, I would have loved to have been coached by somebody like that. You know, I mean, because that's where it all begins. Yeah, right he there. was he was big time uh-huh. lore in that in that area, and I know people who are probably listening to this are just shouting his name, and I don't remember it, but yeah, uh, yeah, I bet so too. Yeah, no, um, so yeah, so you pretty much started, and you you moved into the track and field, right? Obviously, as you got older, um, yeah. it's kind of started bouncing more into the football, into the track and field. One of the things that 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 kind of uh, you know, it, it, it's 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 a good good thing uh, to have. Uh, you know, I mean, because like I said, I always, and, I, and that's going to be my theme, I was never the biggest guy ever, um, but uh, speed can save your life. And, um, yeah, speed uh, you kills, know, they say. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I remember being in junior junior high school, being in ninth grade, and, um, you know, and, and I got a visit by one of the high school coaches uh, on track. And he's, you know, he's like, hey, I heard about you. I'm like, okay, what you hear? He's like, well, someone said you could run. I'm like, oh, okay. And so they ended up promoting me to the high school uh, uh, sophomore track team to run for state. And I'm still shaking my head like, wow, really? And it <laughs> and was, so where did you go to was, junior high at? Where was your junior high? I went to Williams. Um, Williams, okay, uh, okay, high. okay, okay. Not to interrupt you, I apologize. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. I went to, the, uh, went to Williams. And uh, you, let me, you probably went to Wood, right? I went to Wood, yeah. The the old, the new Wood, the new Wood. That, that you got to qualify oh, that for the, the for the Quad Cityans. <laughs> for the Quad Cityans, you know what that means. The new Wood. I went to the new Wood. <laughs> well, let me go. Let, since, since we're going old school, let me bring this up to you. Um, uh, wood was there was such a strong rivalry between Wood and Williams. Um, this is I remember this sequence very well. Uh, and then, then when, when it was basketball time, which I, I, didn't, I didn't have any basketball skills, uh, but so I would always support the team. Uh, Williams uh, one time went out there, and before the Wood game, they had like a log, and they all burnt it, and they threw it out there <laughs> to, the, to, to the Wood uh, foot, uh, players. And then so the next time uh, Wood played in Williams, our, our mascot was the, the Hornets. So one of the guys the comes Hornets. out. The Hornets. I always forgot what Williams' thing was. I, yeah, I never remember. Okay, okay. <laughs> he goes out there with a with a fly swatter and starts smacking our logo in the middle of the, of the court. And everybody's like, ooh. So that's so, it's, it's those things that I remember about growing up in Davenport. And that's junior that's, high. That's not even high school. That's, that's junior, junior high. high. Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's high. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, so I mean, deep, it it is, man. And so much. I mean, people don't. I mean, whatever, man. I mean, obviously, starting from Seth Rollins and obviously the the lore of cats who come out of our area, you, yeah. Roger Craig, Roger Michael Craig, Nunn. Roger I mean, e- even musically, man. I mean, we did, there's just so much stuff that's come out of that area. Um, that's cool as hell, man. That's cool as hell. So and obviously, yeah. uh, so so high school, you wind up going to uh, you West, uh, in, 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 the West Falcons. So you uh, spent your your high school at West, and you wound up going to uh, the UNI, the University of Northern Iowa. You were a Panther for uh, a few years. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, four years. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, I, I had a choice. You know, I mean, um, uh, was to go to kind of a smaller school and kind of, you know, get more of a chance 
to play and maybe kind of stick out a little bit or go to a big school. Um, I actually got letters from uh, uh, Louisville to play football for those guys or, or University of Wyoming Cowboys to play football. But uh, to me, that just didn't, they didn't stand out. I wanted something that was, you know, closer to home. I, I like the state of Iowa. Uh, so uh, when I went up there and did a recruiting visit up there in North Iowa, uh, they, they partied. They, they partied. They had a really good time. No, not <laughs> Iowa. Not that. Iowa schools, they no. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe, huh? Right. Yeah, so, and, and, that, and, and, and just the people were super cool up there in northern Iowa. Uh, I liked, I liked uh, you know, I met a lot of their football players and stuff who were super cool, and they looked like they had a really, really good team going on. So I made that decision uh, uh, to stay a little bit closer to home, and actually I think that turned out to be a really, really good good decision. And um, there's another guy who, who took me under his wings, who's a Davenport product, Mr. James Jones, who went to Central. And, um, Alfie. you know, he, yeah, and he, he ended up uh, getting drafted. Uh, I want to say he got picked up by Cleveland at first, but um, he Retired played in the league the for Lions. years. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, and he, he made a name for himself. So, um, you know, what I wanted to do was as soon as he graduated and get, or as soon as he got drafted, um, I wanted to kind of, you know, follow his lead. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get drafted in the fifth round by the Jets. It was crazy. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna kind of ask like how that kind of moves. So you did your four years, or, or you did all you know all of your years. You graduated from UNI. Um, what was that like, man? I mean, you hear about that whole. Uh, I mean, I, I I never had any kind of that experience, so I'm gonna live vicariously through you, Mister Shed. What was that like, man? <laughs> that whole rookie status coming in. Uh, you know, literally. I mean, you you were a smaller guy, man, but you definitely had skills. What was that like coming into, you know, a league of freaking behemoths? as, you know, a, oh, yeah. a, a, a talented but, you know, smaller cat and a rookie. Now, are you talking uh, college or pros? Uh, pros. One, once you left UNI. Pros. Once you left UNI my, and you my, got drafted by the my, Jets there. Yeah, my um, my rookie year, I, I swear to God, I'm going to, not that I'm getting into uh, a, a, a new career, um, I'm gonna at some point I'm going to cover that because my rookie year was so bad. Hmm. <laughs> I made some of the most boneheaded, ridiculous mistakes you could ever imagine. You wouldn't believe me if you if you tried. Um, and I'm gonna write a book about that. It was just <laughs> insane. It was the worst. And I, and and um, you know, so yeah, I I struggled. I mean, um, you know, I'm not gonna lie. The NFL is no joke. And right. people who go there thinking that hey, you know what, I was a, I was a big will in college. They they usually get smacked right in the face, and it's a it's a, hard, a harsh wake up call. So, uh, and that yeah, is and I that mean, is uh, very interesting, man. And honestly, some of these very well done ESPN like thirty for thirties really kind of not not just bring that kind of thing to light, but so many of these other documentaries that bring that to light with so many of these in depth stories about what you just described. Like, man, you could have been you could have been the Heisman Trophy winner in college, but when you come, you know, to uh, the big leagues, it's just a whole different script. And, it, you know, I, I find it very fascinating because there's this, like, I mean, it's just, I don't know, this almost like paying your dues, which you almost have to do, like this 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 se severe, serious fraternity. So it becomes one of these things that you literally have to almost prove yourself right over again. So, I mean, it really has to be uh, uh, frustrating. But obviously, you know, you, you persevered, man. You, you had a very... Um, you know, lengthy career, and, um, and and you honestly studied under. Did did you not play with, when you were with the Oakland Raiders? You were with Jerry Rice at the toward the end of his career, were you not? Uh, I played against uh, uh, Jerry Rice. Uh, he was on the other side of the bridge at that time. I'm so sorry. My, yeah, yeah. Well, well, no. I mean, um. Uh, so, uh, you know, right when I left, a couple years later, I can't remember if the next year or at least. A, a couple years possibly is when Jerry came over to the Raiders and I had already been gone at that time. I, I finished my, that last year with the Redskins, um, you know, so it's, it, it's just, it's just one of those things where, um, you know, to be honest with you in the, in the, in the league, you, every year you play, you, you, there's a certain scale of, of, uh, of pay grade that you get. And by, by like your fourth or fifth year, uh, you're making some pretty decent size, size money. Right. And if you haven't established yourself as a, as a starter, something like that, 
um, and 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 you and you specialize in like special teams, which is what I which I, I did. I did a really good job at it and made myself a pretty good name. Absolutely. But uh, realistically, the business side is going to kick in at some point. So I was making too much money just to be doing special teams. So it was, you know, they had to go with the younger model, which is that's just the that's the business. The and I'm proud of, the beast, of those yeah. young guys. Yeah, it's the nature of the beast. And uh, I was that young guy who took somebody's spot. I mean, my uh, I don't really I haven't really told anybody this story uh, too much, but uh, Rocket Ishmael was the Raiders' big deal for a couple years. Um, until I came and I took Rocket's spot, um, you know, and just you know, uh, four years later, uh, you know, I mean, um, someone someone took my spot. So that's just the way the league works, and it's, it's the way it's always going to work. And, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you learn from it, though. You grow from it. Well, and it's interesting that you have that perspective, man. Because I mean, I've, uh, the the thirty for thirty series has always been like a, I'm, I've been a huge fan of that, man. And one of the biggest ones yeah. was uh, was was the broke, and uh, it was just so. Ah. It's I'm I'm a big anymore, man. Like I I'm a big like behind the scenes, getting to know like the nuts and bolts of stuff that you just kind of most of us watch. On such a you know these these huge scale things that we just lot watch on the periphery but don't know really the nuts and bolts of it and then like watching you want to know you, well, you, and you don't you do, and when you see things like that Kenny you you're right man you don't want to know you almost just want to be entertained by it because when you see yeah. I mean some of these cats <clears throat> and I'm not this is not me trying to get into your dough this no, is no, not it ahead. but it, no 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 it's I'm not, it's not none of my business your dough but i'm just saying that the, the world of the nfl it's a, it's such a precarious thing man it's just like you know, those guys you, you guys got what three four years maybe if that and it's like it, it, it's just it's just crazy seeing um what what happens man when those cats you know young young kids get hit with you know just watch that broke thing if you haven't seen it like i'm multiple 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 millions of dollars and you pretty much came from uh nothing and oftentimes um dealing with dough that you just really can't imagine um it's it's crazy it's really crazy it's amazing well there's a yeah no it, it, it's mind-boggling isn't it it's just it truly you know is. uh but uh but i i think the guys the young guys are now starting to finally figure it out um you know for, to me and, and yeah i you know to me it's not really talked about so much, but to me, I, I just think that, that there's just too much of this whole, was, you're a young guy and you need to have a financial advisor. You know, get a financial advisor to watch your money, do it, all this stuff, and, you know, do all this. But what people don't know is that those financial advisors, their agenda is to take whatever money they get and invest it in all the type of stuff that they want. Right. You know, it's, and it's, the best, it's not the best interest of the, of the player. Um, well, so, and, then, and then that's, and I, that's the kind of thing they were talking about. That almost, for the yeah. lack of a better term, the ignorance of contractual law to be like, oh yeah, go take care of it. Like, dude, you just yeah. signed off your. I mean, you have, you just got signed. You know, for whatever it is. And when I say ignorance, it's not to uh, con you know bad connotation. Uh, ignorance right. means uninformed. It just I means like. Skin, bro. No, I'm just saying it just means like you know ignorance means uninformed, like not knowing contractual law got so many cats in in really big trouble. You know what I mean? And to, you know, just to what you're talking about, and that you do know you you know these cats yeah. firsthand, and it's crazy hey, to hey, see. Hey, I had, I had my I had my uh I had my guy try uh, you know it, it invest funds that I you know, had in Enron. <laughs> So, hey, Kenny, there's this great, this great new uh, investment <laughs> called Enron, man. It's going to be the next big thing. Oh, like, yeah, okay, wow. Do it. So, you know, you don't know any better until, until the walls start crashing. And um, it's, Isn't you're, that you're crazy, right. Though? And, like, and that's, that's, that's what's crazy. Like, you don't get it until it's like, until you get it. Like, you know, you, yeah. and, and then, and then once it's all gone, you're like, if I could go back then and know what I know now, I mean, it's cool, man. And honestly, like I said, without, I'm not even trying to get into your dough because honestly, whatever dough you had from the thing, you, 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 you transitioned, uh, you were, you were a very successful NFL wide receiver and you now transition all of that into the world of motion pictures. And that's something I obviously want to talk about here with the, uh, AD productions. You guys have a new production going on. I believe it's called Karma. Uh, speak to yeah. us about, um, Speak to us about your film and how that transition was from going from the NFL. Because I see you went to school for it. Um, was this like a kind of a lifelong thing you had going on even when you were win in the NFL? How'd that develop? Oh yeah, um, you know, uh, actually, my my film and and uh, you know, 
one thing before I did the um, the filmmaking mode. I don't know if you know it, but I, I'm I'm a cop now. Ah, yes, yes, I did mean to bring that up. Yes, yes, you did. You graduated yeah. from the police academy in uh, somewhere in California, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, Santa and I Andrew, have that California. right here in my notes, and I just totally did yeah. not. See, yeah, I apologize. Well, no, no, it's 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 you know, I mean, it's 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 fine. But the 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 thing is that if, if me being a cop was necessary because. Um, I wouldn't be able to have the material because I've seen some crazy stuff to be able to put in these movies I'm writing um, <laughs> without without the experiences on in, in law enforcement. So uh, you know, I mean, uh, and so what? How know, did, what, I, what, what? What prompted that? So I, I, you know, and I totally apologize because I that was right here, and I totally meant to <laughs> do that before I jumped to your motion picture stuff. So what? What? What prompted that? you know, segue from the NFL into the, because you went full on into the academy and everything. How'd that work out? Yeah, uh, seven months of all kinds of nastiness, uh, you know, but you, but you, you, you know, everything's crammed in your brain for those, that period of time. You're, you're running, you're busting your butt. It's like boot camp and it's, it's like college all over again because you're learning the laws that you have to follow and to be a cop. And, uh, you know, it's the, not the sound corny, but it's the, it's the I the Iowa root in me. It's the Davenport <laughs> West Falcon in me because to me I'm I just I, I, I like challenges. I, I I like being motivated. Just like all the Midwestern guys that I used to hang around and know, right. uh, we just we were never satisfied. And so moving on to the next the challenge. Meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's let's take on the next challenge. And I you know and and, and you know to throw you in there too, man. Look at everything you got going on. It's it, it's fantastic to see i remember you when you were like like what a couple feet tall yeah but so, i see anyway, bro, 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 my thing was i was i was the runt of the litter i was never any kind of established <laughs> athletic person back in the day i was you know i was i, you mean, know, I wouldn't mean it like that no i'm just saying like i was you know i, I hadn't established myself in any way shape or form it's like <laughs> back in the day as far as <laughs> athletics but um you know, um, look where I, you're I, coming now. Here. I know. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But uh, no, yeah. definitely, um, it's 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 been a long road. <laughs> yeah, and it's not over. Yeah, not even close to over. With. No, and absolutely you, not. At some point, are going to uh, collaborate and do something together. I can. Oh no, it's that. going down, dude. It's already going. You know, the seeds have already <laughs> been planted. The seeds have already been planted. So, talk to me about what you have going on. Um, and if things happen to cut out again, my friend, I will just do as I have done uh, prior and just to hit yeah. you right back. Um, uh, so tell me what you have going on right now. The 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 recent production you have going on, Karma. What's the story behind that? I dig that name. Well, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 true. The only thing is, is that um, it's it's a short film, and the reason why. Um, uh, I, I decided to do Karma, um, you know, rather than going on to the features, is because I didn't feel like I was ready yet. Um, you know, we've, this is, Karma's our third project that we've done. Uh, did a short film called Hidden Secrets, which was, woo, talk about stress and all kinds <laughs> of pressure. I, pu I put myself to a film school down here. Uh, you know, and, um, you know, it was a, like a seven, seven, almost eight week intensive weekend, uh, course, kind of like what, like, like Quentin Tarantino did when he first kind of got into it. He didn't go to a traditional film school or college for that. He just went to like a little, uh, you know, a little small, a uh, little, uh, instructor and here's, here's all the basics. Now you got to go out and do, do all the other stuff with it, which is what he did. Um, so that's, and then um, one of our assignments was to uh, uh, the, our, our teacher would provide the producer, and then you had to do everything else. You had to find your actors. You had to find your location, and then mm. you had your assignment was to have two people interact with each other. And then someone says something that that totally changes the atmosphere, and they discover something about that person, and all kinds of craziness happens. So um, uh, my teacher thought that. Uh, you know, most most of the students don't kind of they kind of like take the class and they get a little bit a little nervous and stuff, overwhelmed with everything. Mm -hmm. And I was too, but I just said, hey, you know what? We're just going to do this. Let's just go. And that was scary, but we made our way through it. And and uh, this is my third project, and I'm having a blast making movies. That's all I can say. 
<laughs> that's awesome, man. That's really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, what I mean, were you always kind of you know into that when you even back in the football days? Like, what prompted that kind of transition? Even you know, because I mean, once you got out of the NFL, you kind of moved into like the Barcelona Dragons. So it's like you weren't just completely done once you got done with the NFL. Like, what what prompted yeah. that kind of transition, and how smooth was that? Well, uh, you know, I mean, I um, to be honest with you, my I had my first. And, and all these short stories are are steps to get to uh, the feature stories that I had swirling around in my head, um, which were just like crazy, like, man, get out of there, man. So the only <laughs> thing you can do when that happens is to write them down. Um, Absolutely, so, yes. Yeah, and I started writing and writing. Like, Wait a minute here. I, I got an intro. I got the middle and the yeah. heck of an ending. This stuff is coming together quite nice. And then I get done with that one, then. Oh shoot! Another story idea, so, and all that was going on in college. Right. So yeah. So go. when I finally yeah when I finally got done with everything, I said, you know what? Those those were those came to me for a reason. So let's let's see what ha- let's see what happens, and um, uh, that's why I give my respect to guys like you, because it's it's the it's the actors who really really make the film. Um, you know, uh, my job is simple. But it's the actors, and I've seen some tremendous actors out there just 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 go digging deep in the love. I've well, even even before. even even you know even before us though, man, we gotta have you know we have that we have to have the architects like you to put the framework in place, and we have to have the writers because without the writers, you know, putting out the you know the stuff for us to you know for us actors to you know portray we're just you know we're just standing there you know what i mean so <laughs> it's you know it, it really is and the thing is bro and this is like the beautiful thing when i have these conversations with people who are in this business yeah. like i started you know years ago and i started as a pa like a grunt and you know having gone from that position to doing almost a little bit of everything outside of touching the camera it really gives that really overall appreciation for the nuts and bolts of the overall every part matters you know what i mean every single part in that whole part matters um i know to you know i agree 100 yeah i mean and that's just my you know that's my personal opinion so um it's it's cool man yeah. it's it, when i when i saw i mean i i don't know i i just recently i got obviously known you forever brother i mean we we known each other yeah. forever but um but it's interesting to hear through the through the old face space some of this stuff i was i was quite um i was very fascinated to see you know some of the stuff you have going on with some of the uh the, the motion picture stuff and that's cool as uh, related to the, uh, the the more uh the the your recent project karma um yeah well, well karma karma um uh, you know, although it was a short film, you know, it's it's you you have if you're going to do it, you kind of have to go full into it. So, uh, Karma was a little bit more expensive than uh, we originally thought, but when we started shooting, uh, everything just looked so good. I mean, we had a we have a cameo <laughs> with the uh, Mr. Sebastian Janikowski, one of my close friends, where once you see it. You're gonna be like, holy smokes! He's only in it for about about a quick ten seconds, right? But it's 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 gonna make the hairs go up. <laughs> he did a, such a fantastic job um, uh, in in Karma, and uh, you know I'm excited and just like, you know, we both we all said, you know, we can cut here, uh, but we're, we're gonna, you know, I mean, there's some stuff we're gonna not be able to get in and all that stuff, and we're just like, no, uh, uh-uh, man, this is coming out too good. Let's just roll. Let's just we'll do what we have to do to make it to, in the end. So, so what do you what what uh, in in time? You know, um, in end of um, end of game kind of uh, scenario. What's when's the release, or when do you guys uh, plan on uh, dropping the old karma? It's been uh, edited now, um, and that's the and like you. It goes back to what you just said. Is just every piece matters. You know, oh, yeah. now editing editing yeah. is definitely huge. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I mean, we're at our guys uh, who's editing it, uh, Julian, we're at his mercy, man, uh, but he yeah, he was part of our film crew, so he's, he's that's like his baby, too, so uh, um, we're excited, uh, the the rough cut. It's the nuts and bolts know. of it, and it's not, it's not sexy at all, folks, but uh, <laughs> we're having some technical difficulties <laughs> a little bit, but we still have a man on the line here. Um, yeah, so you were just kind of saying about, um, you know, the, the, the process of, of, of making yeah. motion pictures and... But the process of, of, of 
what we're doing, no matter what, you have to grow. And um, and I feel like I have as a as a director. So um, you know, the importance of Karma was that the other projects were only one day shoot. So I needed to see can we do a multi day shoot and keep our heads together to make it work. And we were able to do that. So uh, with that, you know, I. You know, we we ponied up with some other filmmakers and stuff here in the Bay Area. So I kind of have a similar thought. Okay, we've done short films and stuff like that. Now it's time to really set things up for the, uh, you know, the reward. Kind of some and, next um, level stuff. Some next level. Yeah, stuff. totally which next brings, level. Which kind of brings me, I guess, to my next question. Um, you know, yeah. <clears throat> 2015. You know, you guys have obviously been doing some pretty cool things with the old Karma production going on. 2016 and beyond. Where do you see uh, AD Productions? Where do you see Kenny Shed? Where do you, where do you, where do you see the whole uh, the whole operation here in the moving future? What do you guys got going on? Well, we set up a timeline um, where the beginning of uh, 2016, uh, we're going to be doing primarily uh, focusing on, on getting our website up and going, uh, promoting ourselves, and um, uh, you know, just setting it up very, very well. And then the the, the, the middle portion, uh, we have four feature uh, scripts. I have one. Um, the partners have, uh, like, three. Um, and then one of those is going to be our, our big money guy, and uh, we're going to polish it up, get it ready. Um, and at the same time, our short films will be highlighted on our website and stuff to build up interest. Uh, we got some some plans for some good film festival uh, uh, submissions. And then with that, we want to build the type of, uh, you know, momentum that could carry over to this uh, short, or to the feature. So by November of next year, I would like to be in a position that we're, we're shooting and we're getting ready to shoot this, uh, this feature. Uh, if it's the one that I wrote, guess what the name of it is? <laughs> Iowa's finest. That sounds dumb. <laughs> Iowa's finest is about uh, two uh, corn-fed Iowa uh, farm boys who ditch the farm to go off to the big city to become big city cops, hmm. and hilarity ensues. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, we don't. And and. I think that we can make it happen, but it's, 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 you know, I mean, you know how the business works. Oh, we no, have absolutely. to be disciplined. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And that, you know, that actually does, that, that premise does sound kind of funny, you know what I mean? A couple, <laughs> couple of Iowa boys. <laughs> and hopefully I can get you down to the West Coast because I could tell you right now there's a role for you. Man, I was just there a couple of years ago, man. My boy Carl Costas, you know Carl Costas, you know the Costas boys, don't you? Maybe you don't. I don't know. He. Whoa. You know so many high-ranked people, man. No, you know, high-ranked, I mean, man. He went to Central back in the day, dude. Carl Costa, he works now. He, he used to work with the Sacramento Bee, and he's he's now in Sacramento. Oh. But yeah, no, uh, yeah, but he, he's yeah. got, man, he, he knows. We're all the same candy and Lance. We, he we used to roll with Lance back in the day, but, yeah, he's out in the West Coast doing I was out there a couple days, a couple, couple days, a couple years ago for a photo shoot. I would, I would, oh. I want to come out there and just see what you're doing and obviously just stay up with you, man, and just stay, you know, abreast on what you got going on because obviously you are doing really dope stuff, man, and I've ever I mean, just, I, it's, it, you know, I, I, I'm giddy, dude. Honestly, I get stoked. Man. Me when too. I, I get stoked when I see cats just doing it, man. Just doing it. I, you know, don't talk about it, be about it, and you've been about it for a minute, man, on a couple of different levels. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that, man. man I, I'm gonna throw it right back back at you. And um, you know, I, I I can't I can't make a film called I Was Finest without some of. I, some of the good <laughs> I will be hey, down here. Even so. if you get me as a seven a seven eleven clerk, man, I'll do it. Man. I'll do it. I, I don't I don't mind at all. Not at all, brother. Just throw me in the okay, mix, cool. man. It's all love. So I check, will. So check it out, man. Um, it's cool. So what, what do you have? Um, you know, as far as social media to throw out to just uh, you know, let how can we follow your product? You personally, your production company. What, what do you want to throw out there? Well, uh, obviously. The website is going to be the is going to be the key. Um, you know, we're going to be getting that up and running here here soon. Um, and I, I, I'm kind of a, stup- a, a superstitious type of a guy, so um, and, I, and I mean, and there's a reason why um, I didn't make 
the my first NFL team, which would be the Raiders, until I did something that I wasn't doing the old the other times with the with the Jets and then the um, with the Bears. Um, it wasn't until I just said I I didn't call anybody from home. I just talked to my I, just, I didn't talk to anybody. I closed myself in the room. I just stuck to myself, and that's what I did for the training camp. Um, and I actually made the team. That was the first time, so I, I'm, I'm very superstitious. There you go. So, well, hold on yeah, to that, man, so, Hold on to that, <laughs> Yeah, I know. So maybe I should be quiet right now, but we go. have big plans. I am we have big you. plans for the projects we're doing, man. and um, a lot of it, it sets up the next things. And uh, the more we can reach out to and connect with uh, uh, people we know and we've grown up with, people we trust and we work together, I mean, we'll get there even faster. Yeah, so, absolutely, man. Each uh, one, teach one. I'm a big fan of that, brother. You know, rising tide, <laughs> you know, raises all ships, brother. We got to do this all together, man. And that's why it's like, I, that's, I that's why it's just love, man. That's why, you know, you know, not that my, my, my show, I mean, I, I ain't mean trying to use foul language, but my show ain't shit, man. But I'm really trying to put people on a profile <laughs> who are really, you know, who are doing something, man. Like I said, like my story arc is I'm trying to show people who are like, you know, where you were, where you at, where you going. And, you know, I, I love those interesting stories, man, and you're definitely yeah. doing it. You're definitely putting it down, man. And um, it's cool, man, and we will we will definitely continue to track your progress, my friend. Um, I appreciate that. It, it, I hope to be like a Will Smith one day in, like, that new movie he's got out. You know, that's what I hope to do one day. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. You're definitely on your way, man. You're definitely on your way. Um, I would be remiss, however, if I let you slide without letting you do what everyone else has done as they've been on this program, and that is participate in a little segment I have on this here program. It is called the Conspiracy okay. Triangle of Doom. It is oh, very, whoa, yeah, whoa. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. Okay. It's deep. It's hot and it's deep. Strap in, my friend. Strap in. It is three. <laughs> it is three very simple questions that you can All either right. answer yes or no, or you can uh, you can elaborate if you wish. The very first question, as my heat just kicked on, hopefully not causing any sound issues. First question, sir: Do you yeah. believe in the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence? I I well. I'm a little c conflicted, mainly because I'm I'm watching the news and they'll say the rovers up there in Mars. Hey, they just saw a rat. <laughs> like, wait a minute here, what? <laughs> or, or like, <laughs> how can they uh -oh. see a rat up there? So, yeah. So, so to me, I, 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 if there's rats up there, there's got to be other stuff. There so must be. There, well, thinking, there's yeah. rats. There must be other stuff. So you're you're, yeah. you're you're of the mind that uh, there there might be something else a little more going on. Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It, it's 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 a, it's, it's a matter of time. It's a solid conclusion. Solid conclusion. Question number two, my friend, if you are prepared, do you follow the narrative or do you believe the official story of the events of November twenty second, nineteen sixty three? This being the assassination of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. The official story being Lee Harvey Oswald fired three shots with his man liquor Carcano, wounding Governor Connolly and mortally wounding President Kennedy. And of course, on the other side, you have your conspiracy theories. <laughs> You're going to come with that. Well, um, say you two, mean two sides uh, to well, this coin. Yeah, I, there's this there's this movie I can't remember the name of it, but it's with uh, Jeff Bridges, and um, you know where they totally set him up to uh, bring explosives into a building, um, and and they made how they set it up was they made him all paranoid about everything, um, uh, you know his mom his wife had gotten killed in some fashion, so they thought that he thought that it was the FBI who did it and. So he was going to pay them back. How they how they totally played with mine to get him to be the scapegoat for this crime for blowing up this big old government building. I can't remember the name of the movie, but it was a, it was a fantastic movie. I vaguely uh, remember with, what you're talking with, about. Yeah, I can't remember the name. It's on the tip of my yeah. tongue. Full of twists and everything. Yes, yes. It, it um, was like mid, uh, not late '90s or something. I, 
Yeah. I know, I know it, was, it, it was. I know you're talking about, but I don't know the name. Uh huh. Yeah, me either. And and but but how how they set him up just 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 woke me up that that any type of events like that it can't be done by just one person. There's there's got to be a there, there's got to be help. There's no way mm. it, a, 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 a something like that can't go down with one person uh, just just doing it on his own. You so, smell a rat. Uh, you smell a oh, rat. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm with you, my friend. I'm with you. I'm right there with you, my friend. All right. <laughs> Question number three. And you mm-hmm. will be finished with a conspiracy <laughs> triangle of doom. Question number yeah, three, right. my friend. Do you follow, along the lines of following narratives, do you follow the narrative of the official version of the events a little bit more contemporarily of the events of September the 11th, 2001. This being the attack on New York City and uh, uh, Washington, D.C., the 19 hijackers doing what they did, and then the other side again of that coin, you have the conspiracy, the inside job of controlled demolition and no planes hitting pentagons and missiles and stand down orders and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you even heard of these things, I don't even know. I, I've, I've heard of those conspiracy theories, and on that one, I can't see a conspiracy theory because uh, for, for stuff like that to go down, there has to be some type of strong, even though it would be beyond comprehension why it would go down like that, but there's got to be some type of uh, end goal. And I didn't, there's, you know, that was just too much, too much uh, death, too much destruction um, with, you know, I didn't see why, why anybody would, would come up with something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 I got you. So to me, I think we got, I think we got attacked. Hmm. So that's, just, that's my thoughts. Interesting analysis from Mr. <laughs> Kenny Shedd, ladies and gentlemen, former West Falcon, former UNI what? Panther, former, and I'll leave out the other ones. Ah, but, thanks, man. But Oakland Raider, baby. <laughs> it has been All my right, pleasure, my friend. Thank you so very much for taking the time. We will do this again. We will do we this sure again will. because you are doing things that I am definitely got my eye on. It's cool to see cool things happening to cool people and you definitely got it going on my friend karma ladies and gentlemen i will also uh-huh. link whatever i can to this video that he has linked to what he's doing his name is kenny shed ladies and gentlemen he's a form he is a quad city and not former quad city and he might be living in oakland or wherever he's at but he's a quad city <laughs> <laughs> nothing better than the midwest baby yeah man <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. It has been my absolute pleasure. Uh, Happy New Year and all the best for 2016. Kenny Shed, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Hey, Jeffrey. Thanks a lot, man. It was nice touching base with you. I'm proud of everything you got going on, and you just keep doing what you're doing, man. I don't see an end in sight for you, which is fantastic. Well, the sky's the limit, man. The sky's the limit. As Donnie Simpson used to say, shoot for the moon, and even if we miss... We'll still be among the stars. Ah, <laughs> Peace, oh, my man. Take, Take care, care my friend. All right, man. Peace. See you. Thank you for listening to It's Me Speaking to You. Please spread the word and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And stay tuned for more conversations with a variety of guests on a variety of subjects.